you making bold disciples. That means that it's important to us that we help you learn and grow in God's word. That way you become strong and bold in your actions for him. Today's story is a good example of that. Jesus is teaching his followers today. But before we can tell our story, you need to go get your bowls. Ready, set, go. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. is alive. Got your Bibles? Perfect. Here we go. We are going to find a book about Jesus. So that means it's in the New Testament toward the back of your Bibles. You are turning to Matthew. Matthew. Guess what? That's the first book of the New Testament. So I'm going to go to the middle, which is Psalms. And then hold it again and go to the middle, which takes you really close to Matthew. Ooh, the New Testament. Very first book is Matthew. You got it. Today, we are going to Matthew chapter 5. So you're looking for a big number 5. Boom. Our story is for Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. Check this out. You got all kinds of titles in there. Great books for you to read, great chapters for you to read at home. Perfect. So have your Bible open and check me, make sure I'm doing the right thing, okay? So I really wanted to record to you outside, but right now it's raining and I didn't want to get all wet. But today's story, Jesus is outside. So they didn't have microphones so people could hear Jesus speak. So they used their environment. So Jesus was on a mountain. He probably went up high and then people could sit around his feet and on down the mountainside, they could see him, they could hear him. Today, we're gonna to talk about where Jesus was. Remember we've talked about, this is all, this is Jerusalem down here and this was Samaria. Well, today we're up north. See that town right there? That's Galilee. See these hills? Those were mountains. Today, Jesus is talking from Galilee. People were following Jesus. They wanted to hear what he had to say. His disciples were there, his followers that he picked to help him. They were there and other people started to watch Jesus and were in awe of Jesus and they wanted to learn from him. So they were following him as well. So they're all listening and Jesus began to teach. And he starts listing these eight things. And today, we refer to them as the Beatitudes. And we refer to his talking on the mountain as the Sermon on the Mount. Mount, mountain, get it? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, these are the Beatitudes. Do you see attitudes in there? Yes, this helps us to have a Christ-like attitude and Christ-like demeanor. It says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for those of the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do not hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall attain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, this wasn't meant for a list of rules that we need to follow if we're good people. No, I want you to think of this Beatitudes list. It's more like a list of things that if your heart is aligned with God's and you're in a relationship with him, these things will come out of you. You'll be able to see other Christians showing these traits. 
It's what we can look for. It's how we show God on the outside, right? But Jesus didn't stop there. Remember, we had all those chapters, chapters 5, 6, and 7. Yeah, he kept going. He taught about more things. He taught believers how they should live. He said that we're the light and that we should shine before others so they should see our good things and praise God. You've heard that before, right? Yep. Then Jesus also taught about God's law. Jesus didn't come to get rid of the law, but to obey it perfectly. He said that to enter heaven, a person just can't look good or righteous on the outside, like the religious leaders of that time did. They must be righteous on the inside, too. They need to obey God for the right reasons, not just to look good. Ooh. How about you? What are you doing on that one? Jesus also taught to love our enemies. Not just love them. Pray for them. Um, I'm not so hot at that one. Sometimes when I get mad at somebody, I want to get back at them. That's not what God said. God said we need to love them and also pour our hearts out and pray for them. Yeah, he was challenging us. He told us that we need to give to the poor in secret. And when you pray, don't just pray so people will hear us and they'll think, oh, what a good prayer you are. No, we should pray because we're talking to God. Jesus also taught the people how to pray. He also said, forgive others. If you forgive others who sin against you, then God will forgive you too. But if you don't forgive them, God said he won't forgive you. I don't know about you, but I want God's forgiveness for sure. So I need to work on forgiving others. Jesus said not to collect treasures here on earth because they're just going to get destroyed or stolen or broke. No, he told us to collect treasures in heaven because for where my treasure is, that's where my heart is also. God always provides for his people no matter what. Jesus taught so many things. I want you to go look. Go look at all these little titles of all the things that Jesus taught. There's so many of them. I brush through them so fast. These are how we should live. And the crowds were so amazed when they heard this stuff, but they were amazed that Jesus taught with authority. He was telling us how it is, guys. So I want to challenge you to go read this and see how you're doing in this in how you're doing in your life. I kind of think it's like ever made a sandwich. Maybe we could have a family challenge. You're gonna go in the kitchen and you're gonna make a sandwich. Now each family member might make a different type of sandwich. Some might have turkey and ham and lettuce and cheese. Some might just do peanut butter and jelly. Some might just have cheese. Yeah, sandwiches are different. But if we cut those sandwiches into heart shapes and we let you all make your own sandwiches, if you were here, that's what we were gonna do. Some of you would have sandwiches that would be gushing out the sides. All the jelly would be dripping all over. Yeah, mm -hmm, you know, it would be looking yucky, wouldn't it? I want you to think about that sandwich that's gushing out. That's what I want your lives to be like. If you have God as part of your life, you should be gushing out all these good things. The sides of you should be overflowing with God's goodness and forgiveness and prayer and worship. You should be gushy like a peanut butter gushy sandwich. It shouldn't be all stuffed inside the bread where you can't even tell what kind of sandwich you are. When people see you, they should see God. Your job is to shine and shine to God. Reflect his love. Reflect his light. Making sense? Yeah, so next time you're having a sandwich, think, I don't want to be a nice, neat sandwich. I want to be gushing for God, right? Awesome. Gushing. Today's memory verse. New one, John 14. Two verses, verse 25 and 26. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all that I have said to you. Lots and lots of words. You know what that means? Because it's no good if you can memorize it if you don't know what it means, right? What that means is God is sending us some help. We're not on our own. 
Jesus is not really physically walking beside us, but he sends us the Holy Spirit that we can't see. He's our power. He's our source of strength. He guides us and protects us. You're not alone in your journey. He's always there with you. Won't we'll ever let us down. So, I have a challenge for you, okay? Here's the challenge. Taylor Marty, I know you, a lot of you have been praying for him. He is in the hospital. He's been in the hospital for quite some time now. But here's the deal. His birthday is coming up. I know some of you have had birthdays when you've been stuck at home. Taylor is stuck in the hospital. So what I want you to do, his birthday is the 17th of July, okay? I am gonna post his address in the hospital on our FCC Kids Facebook page, okay? And I want you to make a drawing, make a card, do something special and mail it to Taylor. So on his birthday, we are flooding him with special things. Maybe we wanna make his day special because there's nothing worse than being stuck in the hospital, right? Right. I'm counting on you. Don't let me down. Think of what you can do to show your light and spread love to Taylor, okay? Awesome. Let's pray before we head out, guys. Ready? Bow your head to show respect. Thank you, God, for each one of us. You taught us a lot of stuff today, God. I just pray that we would hear what you're telling us and we would listen. God, we pray for Taylor. His birthday's coming up. Help us to remember to bless his day and to have him help him have a great birthday, God. Thank you for all that you do for us, God, and you never fail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. See you next week.